Hey everybody, welcome to Brian K. Morris's panel. We're fixing to drop a video for you. To, uh, Brian's going to explain all the some quick notes about how to do uh, broadcasting. Uh, Brian will be monitoring the chat room. Uh, sort of take notes on the chat room, Brian. And okay. if you need, you know, just sort of tell me what needs to uh, come up and sort of give me the timestamp and I'll pull it up on screen for you. All right. Sounds you, good. Sounds good. You get you see, I've never I have been on the other side. So I've been normally on your side where you see the comments. Do they give you the timestamp? Uh, yes, they do. Yes, okay. I see that. Yeah. So yeah. we're I yeah. think we're good there. I'll, I'll leave a, the name and the timestamp and maybe a word or two as to how it starts. OK, so you can All differentiate. Right. Yeah. yeah. Throw them in the private chat and we'll do. We'll do. And we'll thank get you for the, having we'll get me. The, hey, thank you for being here. I just wish I could put put paw to paw and shake you shake shake your hand a lot of people want to shake me until something <laughs> falls out but uh yeah. yeah but joe thank you so much for having me at the the inaugural verd virtual convention and yeah. it just makes me want to show up in person all the more all right so so am i halfway living up to what i've promised uh, dude, you passed my expectations before we got the opening uh, credits open. Okay, so seriously, <laughs> this this is this is fantastic. I am totally right. loving it, and I hope everyone watching it. Please, if you're watching from Facebook in particular, please share this information that we've got something coming out, and let's get some more eyeballs in here. Okay. All right. Let's 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 hit it. Let's do. All right. Pull it up to stream, and I'm gonna. Hi, everybody. How the heck are you? I'm Brian K. Morris, and I'm glad to have you here. I'm an independent publisher, a hybrid freelance author, an award-winning playwright, and a former mortician's assistant. I'm also a frequent broadcaster. I do four regular broadcasts a week. On Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, I do a show called Clever Title Pending in which we discuss um, with our guests um, creativity and the business behind it. And then at 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, I do a, a show on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday called Never Mind the Furthermore, which I engage with my, uh, my audience one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, three times a week for a couple hours every day. And uh, it's been quite rewarding. I've been broadcasting for about five years now, and it hasn't hurt my sales, if you know what I mean. I also have picked up work because of it as a creator, and I'm also frequently on other people's shows to promote what I'm doing and to promote my friends. So I'm a big believer in broadcasting. And if you're wondering how you can get involved, well, you tune into the right place. And yes, this is pre-recorded, so um, you'll see some jump cuts occasionally, but please leave your comments and I will try to respond to them. Uh, if I'm watching live, if this is being rebroadcast, or if you catch this on my Facebook or YouTube uh, pages, I will uh, try to reply to your questions and fill out your wealth of knowledge. But for the next uh, 19 uh, minutes and 20 seconds, now less, I'm going to describe to you uh, how you can become a broadcaster. It's easier than you think. And first thing we're going to start out with is why you should broadcast. The reason why you should consider broadcasting to promote yourself is that this is a video world now, okay? Everybody's carrying these really fancy cameras. Uh, and did you know they make phone calls too? It's true. Uh, but they carry these fancy cameras, uh, and, um, you know, they take them everywhere. They, they, you, they stick their nose in it and ignore traffic as they're crossing the street. Um, we have become addicted to video, to input, constant input. And since people are so uh, attuned to like YouTube or Facebook Live, then that's a good way to reach your audience, your potential buyers and your current fr friends and fans. Um, and it, they say that you should make your personal outreach sound most like you. Well, you know, I stutter. I have false starts to sentences. What better way to sound like me than to do this? Um, what kind of training do you need to do this? Uh, very little. Although um, you don't need to, uh, to study public speaking. I just happen to have a background 
in broadcasting. I used to do uh, pledge breaks for my local PBS station. I have also uh, done community theater, which has helped a lot. And retail helps you quite a bit because you have to reach out to strangers, say, hi, hey, can I help you? I've got a message. You need to buy this uh, brand of so-and-so. Well, this time the thing you're selling are your books, your comic books, your crowdfunding campaign, and most importantly, you. Now, we're not only a video-based uh, society anymore, but we're also a litigious one. So here's my disclaimer. Uh, the views expressed are solely those of Mr. Morris and not the venue that's hosting him. And he doesn't guarantee that any of this will work for you, but it'll work better than not doing it at all. So, uh, so um, get ready to start learning some stuff. Get a, a pad of paper and uh, several pens, and let's see how much knowledge I can fill your head with about broadcasting. Now you're here, you're saying, Brian, I'd love to broadcast, and heck, I think I can talk to people one-on-one, -on -one because right now I'm not imagining you, and I'm certainly not doing that thing they say where you should imagine your own. Did we just lose me on there? Uh, does anyone else not? Uh, no. Um, <clears throat> I believe so. I just all of a sudden the sound cut off for a minute, about 30 seconds, and then the video stopped. Okay. Well, I did see somebody like push the button to stop it. I stopped the video because we lost audio somehow. Okay. Oh. Is that is that what happened? Audio? audio yeah, I, was yeah, losing, audio I lost the off. audio. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Uh... Well, Give me just a second. Yeah, let's review a little bit of what we talked about prior. Yeah, re so, review yeah. while I review while I rewind. We will. So we will. Yeah, so it doesn't take a whole lot of knowledge. You know, I personally work in retail, so I'm used to talking to random people about buying random things. We actually have a what we call like a plus one program, and like right. if you buy a poster, oh, you need these command hooks or whatever. So I'm getting more and more used to it. And I used to podcast back in the day, but this. Is scary to me still and so what kind of you know advice would you say for the extroverted introvert in me um well i have some i've developed what i like to call me not me who is a second personality that has a lot of the attributes of regular brian um with a little more caffeination uh a lot less uh inhibition and just realize that most people watching you are not there to watch you fail. They're there to watch you succeed, and they will cheer you on. And yay, you know, yay. yeah, exactly, yay, John. And, yeah, and the thing is, you know, you're always going to get trolls and everything, but they are going to be so outnumbered, trolls? especially well, you're on the internet. One troll, yeah, because I am, I am one of the trolls. So. Oh, I, I'm the worst <laughs> one of all. So you know, I know how to defend against them. Uh, they are my people. But uh, but no, um, if you have any sort of customer service position, whether it's like talking to somebody on the phone or one on one in you know in FaceTime, then uh, you've already got a lot of what you need to do a broadcast like this. Um, I think I go into it in the video, but uh, when I did, P I got to do the Doctor Who breaks at my local PBS station back in the day. And I learned that if I'm thinking that there's 5,000 people watching me, I'm going to have to wring out my pens. But if I just, the, what I did was whenever I'd start a, a segment, I'd go up and introduce myself to my camera person. And from that point on, I'm talking to that camera person. I'm not talking to the 4,999 people that are watching it out in the ether. I am I am talking to the guy or gal behind the lens. There. So basically, you're just now having conversation at that. Point. Okay, guys, exactly. I've got it. Exactly. I've got I've got it Good fixed. Question, Blake. I've got it fixed. Th thanks for, oh. guys. Thanks for being here, helping when no we have tech issues. Thank you. Thank I did a whole convention to fill in, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Too. All right. Let's. Let's go. And back to full Your Brian. Books, 
your crowdfunding campaign, and most importantly, you. Now, we're not only a video-based uh, society anymore, but we're also a litigious one. So here's my disclaimer. Uh, the views expressed are solely those of Mr. Morris and not the venue that's hosting him. And he doesn't guarantee that any of this will work for you, but it'll work better than not doing it at all. So uh, so um, get ready to start learning some stuff. Get a, a pad of paper and uh, several pens, and let's see how much knowledge I can fill your head with about broadcasting. Now you're here, you're saying, Brian, I'd love to broadcast, and heck, I think I can talk to people one-on-one, -on -one because right now I'm not imagining you, and I'm certainly not doing that thing they say where you should imagine your audience naked. Uh, that's for later. No, I'm uh, talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. You, at the other side of this camera, you're my audience, and I'm talking to you. Ignore the other people that might also be watching this video. This is just for you. This is just you and me talking. That's Really is about public speaking, okay? Um, and you're probably saying, well, Brian, that's all well and good, and I think I could do that because I talk to cashiers and I talk to the pr people behind the uh, desk at the post office, uh, but, um, you know, it's got to be expensive. Uh, no. Right now I'm doing this on my laptop. Uh, the special program I'm using it is Camera with Windows 10. Um, and this microphone um, for this broadcast is the only real purchase I've made. And it cost me about uh, 40 bucks on eBay. And I think that included the postage. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. In fact, a lot of YouTubers don't use laptops or fancy cameras. Some do. And they use fancy lighting and stuff. No, 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 no. A lot of people use this thing. It's your phone. It has a very, very crisp uh, uh, image that it can draw. It's a digital image, so it can be edited easily. Uh, in fact, some people edit their uh, videos in their phone. We're not going to get into editing because that's out of my um, my specialties, okay? Uh, I'm, in a lot of ways, I'm pretty much a Luddite in a lot of this. But anyway, this also has a very strong microphone. So, uh, like I said, a lot of YouTubers use this for mobile shots. Now, I choose to simply broadcast from where I'm at. This is my writing office, actually. Uh, I've also broadcast from my living room. I've broadcast from my dining room. Uh, I've done uh, other remote shows, but I've taken my laptop in order to do it because that's the equipment I'm comfortable with. So do what's comfortable for you. Now let's talk about lighting. Okay, you don't want deep shadows created on any part of your body. In my room right here, and you'll see some glare in the background and occasionally in my glasses, just uh, ignore, ignore that if you will. That will be taken care of in time because we'll, we'll talk about backgrounds too. Anyway, um, I have a three-headed light over here that I ripped off from my living room to illuminate me from my two o'clock. Now, at 10 o'clock, I have a five uh, bulbed light with uh, those little adjustable snaky arms. Three of them are pointed in my direction. Two are bouncing off, and you can't see it, but my ceiling is the same color as the wall behind me. So it kind of reflects and comes down on me. If you've ever been to a stage play, you'll see that they are mostly lit from above, except for the spotlight moments. And it's it's not expensive. My two lamps here probably didn't cost me thirty five dollars. Um, and like I said, I had one anyway. Uh, you can also use ambient light from a window. Just don't put it behind you because this creates a silhouette effect that is really unattractive. People want to see your beautiful face. Look at your expressions. The pain in your eyes is you can't think of what to say next, which is why sometimes you should uh, bring notes. So anyway. Um, there's nothing expensive about this. And you're probably thinking, well, Brian, what uh, special programs do I need to use to get on the air? Hmm? Well, we're going to cover that right now. Uh, Facebook has its own proprietary system that you can log on and it will uh, activate your microphone and your uh, camera inside your your device, or, um, like in this case, my laptop or your phone or your fancy switcher equipment, whatever. Uh, you can also use uh, something called OBS, which is Open Broadcast Software. You can get that at uh, obsproject.com. It's a free download. 
Uh, OBS is probably one of the most sophisticated systems that I've ever worked with. And I used to use it. Uh, and I had a really fancy schmancy setup on it where I had like a ticker tape crawl across the bottom like a news program. And I could change the scene and bring up cards, different graphics, uh, insert videos and such. Uh, but I found that there was a steep learning curve on that. And uh, since I'm doing this by myself, I don't have somebody else handling the controls for me, which is probably a situation most of you are going to find yourself in. Uh, it just became too distracting to really keep engaged with my audience and uh, deliver my message to them. So um, it's a good system if you're a little more tech savvy, I think. But what I use generally for my recordings and for some of my pre-recordings is called StreamYard.com. This is not meant as an endorsement from for them, and I've not accepted any money from them. But I do use it because... Um, it does have a pay level, as does OBS, and you get more the more you pay. Uh, StreamYard at the free level will allow you to bring guests in so you can co-host a broadcast. Also, um, it is very sophisticated and allow, it, it allows you to upload graphics that you can put in and around you on the screen. You can split the screen with other people. You, um, I know the $40 a month subscription version will allow you to have 10 people simultaneously on the screen. I don't know nine other people would really like to be alone with me, but that's another issue. Uh, and the learning curve on StreamYard is very, very low. Um, it's, um, it's not as... Uh, not as um, fancy as uh, OBS, but then again, it's a lot easier to do, especially if you're the only person doing the switching, which is changing scenes and bringing people in and out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it, you can find that at www.streamyard.com. Uh, I do recommend. Uh, checking both of them out. Uh, and the nice thing about StreamYard is also you can uh, send your message out to multiple platforms at the same time, which include, um, I do multiple face Facebook pages. I have two pages currently on YouTube, including my own Ryan K. Morris Rising Tide Publications um, page. Please subscribe, give it a like. You'll see this video on there eventually. Uh, and you, I also have a link to my LinkedIn account, which I don't use that often. I believe you can do Instagram from there. Also, Twitter has a video function. But do the research. Uh, there is a top secret. Um, there's a top secret uh, website that not everybody knows about. Uh, if you have any questions about broadcasting, in fact, about writing or publishing, um, I really recommend this one to you. Get ready to write this down, guys. It's really important. Um, it's called google.com, okay? Just type in your question. Whatever you want to know, you'll find it there. Also, YouTube has a plethora of videos that will help you become a better broadcaster and even a better writer and publisher. It's really cool. Uh, there's a lot of information there from people who are actually doing it. Now, let's talk about branding and backgrounds. Um, branding. This is my branding. Uh, people know me for the glasses, the Fez, especially Doctor Who fans, because Fezzes are cool, bow ties are cool. Also, the the mun chops. Um, I I I just like how they look, and it reminds certain people of Isaac Asimov, the classic science fiction author. Uh, so this is my personal look. You will have to decide what you want to look like when you're on the air. I do recommend, however, do not use like trademarked stuff. Uh, if you look behind me, I've been very careful to remove any trademarked material. Uh, it's either in the public domain or specially created, uh, which falls under fair use, um, which is probably a good video to have on its own. Uh, but you don't want to have any sort of um, like a logo on you because it's distracting. You want people to be thinking about you and what you are saying. If any, and if anything, um, have, wear a t-shirt with your book cover on it. Wear a, a polo shirt with your logo, your company logo stenciled on it. Same thing goes for your background. Now this one is a little bad because uh, although it's made up of things and images that mean something to me, you'll see glare coming off of right here. You'll see glare coming off of right here. That shouldn't happen. 
Uh, I will be redoing the, the set. It's kind of a work in progress. But again, remove all trademarked uh, stuff. If anything, what you should be having are like images of your work, your artwork, your writing, the covers of your books and magazines, stuff that is subliminally telling the viewer what you do. And the more of your stuff that you have up, the better it looks. All right. So think about how you're projecting yourself to your audience visually. Another thing that comes up occasionally is music. I mean, music can really set the tone for a broadcast and a lot of uh, shows have their own theme music. Now here's where you can really run into trouble. And I've had it happen to me fairly recently. I used the uh, video that I thought was in the public domain all of it, um, but a company that manages intellectual properties, including music, gave me what's called a copyright strike on Facebook, saying that I was using their music with that they represented, of course, without permission. And uh, the consequences would be either I'd have to take down that video and replace that uh, piece of uh, footage, or if it were somehow monetized, I'd have to give them the money. Well, I'm too greedy. I don't want that. Uh, YouTube is especially sensitive about that. But um, there are people out there who are making what are called creative common music. Creative commons. It's a very useful thing to know. And uh, in exchange for just, say, a credit on whatever you're producing, um, they'll let you use that. Sometimes it's for non-commercial purposes. Sometimes it's uh, for a meager fee or sometimes it's just for the credit, or sometimes you don't have to do anything but just use the music and they're happy. A great source of this, of all places, is in YouTube. They have a studio that anyone with an account can access, and there is a musical library, different styles, everything from ragtime to Halloween, classical to hard rock, you know, death metal. If you want a a polka intro to your show. There's probably someone out there doing it and will let you use that to your heart's content. Um, so that's the only kind of music I would possibly use. Otherwise, like on YouTube, if you get three copyright strikes uh, that are undefended, you could lose your channel and lose all your videos and lose your monetization. And that in this day and age is very important. Don't worry about monetization just worry about communicating with your audience. That's the chief purpose of broadcasting. I will also say that uh, if you know anything about special effects in from Hollywood, uh, you know about what are called green screens, in which uh, another image is broadcast or superimposed behind the foreground uh, characters. Uh, both StreamYard and OBS will allow you to do uh, green screens. I'm not quite that savvy yet, but we, maybe next time I do this video, we will have that. Uh, again, be aware of whether the image you're using in the back is copyrighted or not. But otherwise, you um, could make your whole setting look like a, something like the bridge of a, a sci-fi starship or a newsroom. In fact, that's how a lot of uh, news organizations have they have their studios now that a lot of what is behind them is computer generated uh, and you just have the foreground characters and the desk and the props or whatever. So anyway, that's a little bit of trivia, but uh, green screen might be something you might be interested in using. Now, in the few minutes we've got remaining for this broadcast, let's talk content. Notice I saved the most important thing for last. Content is king. You've been hearing it for years, and it is very true in broadcasting. And what should you broadcast? Well, I've got this book to sell. You know, hey, everybody, buy my book. You can get it on Amazon. Make sure you hold it uh, a little tilted forward so that it doesn't glare with your lights. Another tip for you. Um, but nobody wants to watch an infomercial. Okay, there's enough of that on broadcast TV. Instead, let them get to know you. Read a passage from your book. Uh, tell people what went into the creation of your comic book. Um, what inspired you? What inspires you? Uh, what are the authors and the artists and the creators who had an impact on your output? Um, uh, drop hints of upcoming projects. Talk about how you do what you do. Talk about uh, why you set up a Patreon page. Uh, talk about uh, why people should, um, uh, you know, check out your crowdfunding project like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Uh, what you did on vacation or just have a conversation in live video. Live is a really great way if you're good at improvising uh, and thinking on the fly. 
live video, such as what you can do on any, almost any major social platform is a real good way for your audience to get to know you. And if they, if they genuinely appreciate you, then chances are they might uh, be interested in what you do as far as creativity goes. So when you get on the air, share your insights, share your history, share your passion for what you're doing. Share yourself. Don't be afraid to look a little bit silly, all right? Um, take yourself not seriously, all right? Don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how you learn. That's how I got so smart. Like, don't hit your microphone. Um, and be encouraging. Be positive. That's the thing that people really need right now is encouragement and um, to know that they can do it too and that they should follow you as a thought leader, as a source of entertainment, as a source of insight, maybe just as a friend. So this kind of scratches the surface of broadcasting, but like I said, I'm on th uh, three times a week at 10 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook, uh, never mind the furthermore, where if you want to come on and ask me some questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. And I appreciate your attention these last 20 minutes. We hope that you'll get the, the moxie to go out there and just give this a shot. It's a great way to build your audience and build your following. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Brian K. Morris. And remember, as always, stay smart. Stay safe, wash your hands, and never apologize for being awesome. Have a great day, everyone. And that was me back in the day. No, it was just a, about a couple weeks ago or so. And uh, again, I want to thank Joe and everyone here at Halicon for letting me... Uh, present my video. This was the world premiere of it. Sorry we had some kerfluffles. Now, in a, we've got a couple minutes remaining. If anyone has any questions, I would be more than happy to uh, to try to answer them. Um, was there something we didn't cover, something you would like to know about? And I know I've got some friends here that see me uh, fumble through my shows. Uh, so thank you very much. Carl Witzman says, very good. Susan uh, Basham says, that was great. Thank you. Mind Twist 81, awesome. Appreciate it. Chris Walker, thank you very much. All good ideas. I hope that you all you know can walk away with the... Uh, some uh, some new insight into broadcasting. Um, just to, uh, to uh, talk a little bit about uh, letting people see you, there's a story about a uh, woman, uh, one of those romance authors who was, you know, just put on this kind of like 50s Hollywood glamour image. And um, one day she was broadcasting from her kitchen and she sprang a leak in her thing and started swearing like a Marine trying to put this thing out. And her views just skyrocketed. Chris Walker asks, how long did it take you to start building your audience? Um, um, my audiences, Chris, were very modest at first. I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for five years in one way or another. Uh, and it takes time. It takes per perseverance. I think the thing to do is, one, tell people you're going to be on the air. Let them know you're going to be on. And also, if you can, try to broadcast at the same time every time, you know, whether it's once a month, once a week, once a day, if you're ambitious. Uh, but consistency, I think, is the, the key, Chris. And uh, encourage people to share your video. Encourage them to like what you do. Because here's another thing. When you like uh, this, if you see it on fa uh, Facebook, give that video a like. It helps the visibility because that's what the algorithms respond to. Same way with YouTube. Give that a like. A subscribe does even more. So if you like what you saw here, please go to my Brian K. Morris Rising Tide pop publications page and give that a like. And see, that's what you do. You ask people to do it. And if they like what you do, they will respond. So uh, what kind of mic do you use, says Jeffrey Hayes? You know, that's a good question. I was trying to find this information for somebody. I don't know the model of it, but I did find the manual. It is Neewer, N-E-E-W-E-R. And I got this thing off of eBay at the recommendation of the Eric Hawkins, who uh, uses it in his own broadcasts. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it, it doesn't tell me the model number or anything. I don't remember which one it is. But it's a really good microphone, and I got it, like I said, you know, for probably about 40 bucks, including postage. Uh, like I said, you don't have to spend a whole lot, Jeffrey. And it's uh, one of the nice things about broadcasting. Now, you see the guys at Stupid O'Clock. They have 
some pretty sophisticated setups and it works. And I'm watching this video in its entirety. I've, I've learned one thing myself. Don't lean into the microphone, but anyway, um, but that's another thing. Um, also a lot of microphones come with a, a, wind, a, like a wind guard so that you don't do the peas popping sort of thing. And notice I have mine off to the side. I pick that up from singer Tom Jones. That way my breath is going this way, but the sound is getting picked up from over here. There's another thing for you. Uh, Carl Wisman, the only thing I would push is that good audio is more important than your video. Yeah, um, higher resolution is good, Carl. That's a very good point. Uh, sound is um, one of the things that uh, you don't know till you hear it, in the playback especially. Uh, so um, it, it's good to be aware of your, your sound, your background, everything. But the nice thing is you can do this on the fly. The, what I do now is very similar to what you see here. Uh, you see my early uh, efforts. Uh, somebody, I was sick la a year ago and a friend of mine did my shows for a week and he found my very first Nevermind the Furthermore and I thought I would have another relapse uh, watching it because it was god awful. The lighting was dismal. Uh, I was broadcasting upwards, you know, so people were looking at my nose hairs um, rather than something like this where I have my laptop on a platform uh, so that we're kind of eye to eye the way we'd be in real life and makes makes us a little more relatable, I hope. Um, but uh, but yeah, the um, I, I, I see that audio is very, very important because people have to hear you and um you know, but pay attention to all of it, and you can fix it one step at a time is a beautiful thing. Susan Basham asks, do you do anything special to warm up or take care of your voice? Um, I do uh, sometimes vocal warm-ups, especially for the morning show. I make sure I drink hot liquids, like I'm a coffee fiend. So, you know, it's like, you know, with the uh, Tim Hortons there mainlining it. Uh, but I drink usually in the morning warm, uh, warm liquids rather than cold, which will... Um, kind of uh, freeze up your uh, your larynx, your vocal cords a little. Uh, plus, I, I do uh, vocal exercises occasionally. And sometimes uh, when I'm about ready to go on, I will like, you know, kind of stretch my jaws sometimes. You know, not, not, I'm not auditioning for Kiss when I do that. But it's like I do things to just loosen up my uh, my mouth. And uh, speaking widely, you know, you could speak like this, like a lot of people do, but it's it, you just don't get the emotive flair if you instead let your mouth open up. It's something you learn in singing. Like I said, I did community theater musicals and stuff. And so I picked up little singing things that have actually helped me as a broadcaster in my presentation. And coffee, says that YouTube user. You got that right. I'm telling you right now. Uh, I, I tell people uh, coffee is the lubricant upon which the gears of creativity grind. So, um, Carl Westman, I see a lot of beginners trying to get 4K video with 60 frames per second, and they have a crappy mic. And now there you go. There you go. I, I think it, you you hit on an interesting point there, Carl, that your audio and video should be about on the same level. So if, you know, if you have crappy uh, video, you might as well have crappy audio. But you can't, again, you can improve it. And sometimes it isn't even your equipment but for instance you see that like here on StreamYard, there's a little gear, looks like a little gear like what you have on windows 10 and you can ratchet up and down your video and audio quality so great thank you susan thank you appreciate your questions you guys and gals have been wonderful um you've had some great questions and until joe throws me out of here i'm willing to keep answering them all right um and joe is in the stream audio only i'm i'm Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. There I am. Okay. Dear Lord, Lord, good. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm trying to give you as much spotlight as possible, Brian, I because this it. is your hour. My hour. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Well, no, I agree. And you've got some great questions here. And if yeah. anybody has any more questions, seriously, there are no stupid questions. I cannot guarantee the answers you get, though. So uh, uh, and have a sense of humor about this. That's going to help you a lot. Well, I have always been told the dumbest question was the one that was never asked. Exactly. Exactly. And so, I will, yeah, no, you're ask right. away. Uh, Gapacho Gonzo says people will listen with to audio without video, but not video without audio. 
That yeah. said, personality is greater than all. That's true. That's true. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to have a larger than life image. Um, unfortunately, this, you know, when you meet me in person, this is pretty much what you get. Lord help you. Uh, but, um, uh, but no, uh, and a lot of people you'll find, oh, here's another tip for you all that, uh, I'm a great believer in, uh, work once and get paid numerous times. Yeah. You can, you can set your, uh, your video broadcast up in a, and just pull the audio out later as an MP3 and then present it as a podcast across various platforms. Uh, uh, you've been recommending that, me to do that with a, another broadcast venture I've got going. Yes, indeed I have. And, you know, and, you know, and like I, you have to judge whether you think that your format will accommodate it. So, you know, just, what I would do is listen to one of my video a video that you've done and listen and think now does this does the vision do the visuals help you in any way you know is like is there enough visual that just the audio uh, doesn't carry the narrative if that makes sense uh, but on the other hand you know if it can then you might as well make a podcast out of it and create another stream of potential revenue mm -hmm. uh gaspacha gonzo absolutely i just got paid for my backlog today well good for you now that's the one thing i say don't worry about monetization when you first uh, get going because that's a long long road uh the different platforms will have different criteria for monetizing your uh, broadcasts, uh, but some will allow you to take money, for instance, to present uh, like some sort of uh, advertising. Uh, that's something we've started doing with our shows. Uh, so, um, you know, just you just have to be aware of what the terms of service are. Uh, and Carl Witzman has another uh, thing there at 4.36 p.m. Thought up another idea. Some people's intros look like the second coming, then they start the show, and it's just a guy in a feed store, hat in a closet. Well, Carl, don't tell all my secrets, okay? <laughs> uh, and he says, don't overpromise. That's another thing, that whatever you do, um, you know, promise less, deliver more. All right. But the thing is, communication is, I think, key in any sort of content. Um, I, I got hooked on a lot of videos on YouTube simply because they were, you know, they were educational and I like learning stuff. But they were also reaching out to their viewer and talking to them as if it were one on one, just as like what I tried to uh, to be there. And then I've got a comment there at 438 from Jeffrey Hayes of Plasma Fire Graphics. He said, I'm proud to be a sponsor of your programs, Jeffrey. We're proud to have you, sir. How did you decide what to charge for advertising on your shows? Um, that's an excellent question. I contacted some people who were doing paid advertising on their uh, YouTube shows, and um, uh, I just compared notes and came up with a figure. Actually, I came up with the low end of the figure for like taking my – my audience into consideration, like the, my numbers and all, you should always keep track of your numbers, uh, especially if you want to grow your network. Uh, and then I thought, well, if I were an advertiser, would I pay this to sponsor an episode? Would I pay the higher amount to sponsor an episode? And then I I came up with a couple of um, uh, numbers and now we are accepting a sponsorship. So now the thing is, um, I wouldn't have done it five years ago when I was just starting because I couldn't see anybody wanting to encourage me to keep going. But that's what your audience will do once you find your tribe. I got one uh, for you real quick, Brian. Yes, yes, please. What is your opinion on using mnemonics for like keyword placement, like at specific times or specific areas of your show? Like, you know, it's two for Tuesdays and we're going to you know hit you up with two songs from Aerosmith or, you know, Keywording and placement in your shows, do you think that has a good mental effect on your people, or do you always go kind of freestyle? My own stuff is freestyle. That's an excellent question. My stuff is freestyle because mentally I'm as disorganized as they come. Um, I am too. My, That's why I was curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The inside of my head looks like it ought to be a FEMA disaster site. Uh, but, um, but I am trying to get more, especially now that I have advertisers to be responsible for. So I am trying to get their message in. 
Uh, I follow one called the Legend of the Traveling Tardis that uh, he has uh, he has his spots at the quarter hour, and I admire that kind of discipline. Uh, whereas my show started out uh, basically one man, one camera, and about forty people tuning in. Uh, not all of them staying, but um, it was very disorganized. But you have to start somewhere, and which brings up another thing. You know, yes, there are broadcasters out there who attract millions of people to their broadcast, like a PewDiePie or, uh, you know, like a, a Jake Logan or a, a Philip DeFranco, two of which I like uh, in that statement. <laughs> but uh, the idea is that they started out very small as well uh, with a small audience and they just build it with consistency. Their show, you know, Philip DeFranco, especially, um, he started out as a wannabe white rapper. Oh, yeah. um, which, I remember those days. Uh, yeah, and Sa and he keeps those videos up to remind him of those days to keep him humble. Yeah. It, he's and basically I, the John Cena of YouTube because John Cena started out as a rapper and then worked his way up to where he is now. So. Yeah, exactly to near godhood. But okay. uh, but uh, yeah, did y'all? Uh, there were two comments that popped up since I had to run away real quick. Yes, uh, the Jeffrey Hayes comment. Yeah, did you cover that? that one already. Yes, we did. And yeah. did you get uh, Miss Basham's? Ah, I didn't see that. Thank oh. you, Joe. Uh, Susan Basham, when you broadcast frequently, do you ever run dry on topics? Do you keep every anything on the back burner in case it's a light topic week? Uh, yes, frequently. When I started out, and this was a great crutch for me, I had what I called an agenda. And I would write down ideas on a piece of paper like this and... Uh, we would try to, I would try to work them in if I could, but since my morning show is pretty much uh, based on what people post in the comments, we can riff off of that. And so um, sometimes they will suggest things that, um, uh, that will, that are on their minds and that we can discuss in a civil manner. Uh, and my two, my uh, evening show, Clever Title Pending, I have, it started out as like pretty much the morning show, but broadcast later. Because we kind of envisioned it as kind of a Brian without a filter. Well, Brian doesn't have a filter anyway, so that's kind of redundant. Um, and I try not to uh, use rough language on my own program. I slip occasionally, but uh, we. Uh, but anyway, I got the idea a few months about four months ago to start interviewing my very creative friends, and uh, uh, I've I. I used to prepare like about three hours worth of questions, but I also took questions like we're doing now from the audience and letting them decide what they want to hear. And I think it's that interactivity with your audience, whether you're presenting like a, um, a pre-recorded piece uh, or whether you're doing it live like we're doing right now, that's very important to interact with your audience like we're doing right now, Susan. And uh, and don't be afraid to change your format. Like I said, Philip DeFranco started out as, you know, white teenage rapper and has evolved into, I think, one of the best uh, news programs, one of the most balanced news programs uh, on the air on any medium today. So, uh, and here we go. Um, Carl Witzman has a thing. I like how Brian gets to his point right away and doesn't dither for nine minutes to get started. Yeah, I, I like to cover my point, Carl. I may go like this once we get started, uh, momentum being what it is, but uh, it is, one thing this will do is teach you um, how to present yourself better. I do try to be, I'm better focused now than I was uh, five years ago, which isn't a exactly a high bar to hurdle. Uh, I also have cut down on my you knows. I still do it. I don't stutter as much as I used to. And my diction has improved immensely. Uh, especially now you've got to do it, especially now that we have automatic uh, subtitles. Um, I fear to see what's under the screen. Great. Susan, thank you very much. Susan, when you... Uh, uh, if you're doing anything, and if you uh, uh, like in broadcasting or when you start, please let me know. Please find a way. I'm on uh, I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm on uh, Twitter. I'm mostly on Facebook, but just let me know. Uh, I would love to see what you guys and gals are doing from this point on. Uh, so no, getting back to your saying, I don't run dry on topics because I am uh, uh, 
utilizing my audience to come up with the topic. So, but uh, I know a show like that. I know a show like that. <laughs> I know, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, Thursday, my Thursdays and Saturdays now have meaning to me. They were once empty wastelands, especially after nine o'clock uh, Eastern time on Thursdays and Saturdays at eleven. And that's another thing. Don't be afraid to cross promote your friends. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Seriously, um, let their gravitas work for you, and vice versa. <laughs> Seriously, uh, because uh, and it's you know we talk about rising tide. If I can for a moment, Joe, uh, yeah. try and stop me. Yeah. But Jeffrey Hayes says I do say. Oh, oh I can stop. I can stop you. I mean, oh, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> help, help. <laughs> anyway. I love got, you, Brian. I love you too, Joe. And I'd kill for the chance to. But anyway, but bad Brian. But anyway, no, uh no, seriously, um uh the rising tide is a personal philosophy. John F. Kennedy used to uh say uh, a rising tide raises all ships, and I found that to be true. When I started uh as a full-time writer, I got a lot of advice from people who didn't have to give it to me, and yet they did. And I learned really, really quickly that the only way you can pay that sort of thing back is to pay it forward. And that's why I'm here happily sharing what I know of broadcasting. So anyway, you, I saw you had another comment come up. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Chris Walker goes, uh, Laura, Joe, need, Joe needs focus. Too many squirrels and distraction. I think he's gotten better with it, though. Yeah. With the video... Uh, it has helped me because I, every, I'm every i seeing everything right in front of me, which has helped. Uh, of course, Jeffrey Hayes says, uh, a lot, but because he's old. Hey, uh, I, get off I, my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Automatic response. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you so much, Brian. Uh, again, this it's an honor to have you here because I recognize you as a Pioneer in the broadcasting and StreamYard. Well, thank you. Uh, of course, it it amazed me that we actually, in the opening ceremonies, got a representative from StreamYard yeah. to come in. <laughs> Seriously, that was if you missed that, folks, you missed something. We had one of the the uh, the chief hands on the wheel from uh, this platform that we're using. I mentioned StreamYard, mm -hmm. and you've seen already just with the time when Joe and I have been here. And you saw the video. That is some of what StreamYard can do. Um, and I'm not a paid representative of anyone associated with StreamYard. Uh, but uh, my PayPal is open. Uh, it's paypal.me forward slash rising tide BKM. Uh, just letting you know, guys, just in case. Anyway, uh, but um, uh, but seriously, uh, yeah, StreamYard is a beautiful uh, platform. And I think one of the things, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but if you have control over your sh the look of your show and it's fairly easy to do, you're going to feel more confident and then push the envelope on what you are able to do. You're going to try to top yourself. You know, I've, I've seen your show develop quite a bit just since you started using StreamYard. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good look. And make sure I have spelled this right. Yes, thank you very much, <laughs> Inclu including the capitalization of BKM. Yes, that is a tip jar that we have. And thank you, Joe, um, and yeah. for this and the kind words. We use our tip jar because uh, that's how we are uh, improving the look of our broadcasts and of our publications is through the uh, the tip jar. So uh, thank you again, Joe, and thank you for your very kind words. Uh, considering all that you've gotten done with uh, Stupid O'Clock and now this, man, that is... I am I am well and truly praised. I sincerely am. All right. I'm going to add something here. Okay. That's another thing. You can do crawls across the bottom of the screen. We're going to be a 48-hour infomercial. We're going to be a 49-hour infomercial for StreamYard yet, and I, I have no problem with that. Not at all. I mean. Uh, and then that tip about adjusting the color earlier. Holy yeah. cats. That's yeah. uh, that's major. Yeah. Now now we got a new got got a new help Brian. <laughs> that's right, Tim Horton's coffee ain't e ain't cheap in my part of the country, folks. No. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to roll the lid and win big. Pay this man. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. But no, no, it's uh, uh, and also I have a Patreon page. Uh there are different ways that uh if you are looking to uh, supplement what you do 
um, it's it's easy enough. And uh, yeah. like I said, you don't have to like get a second and third job to afford better equipment than what you naturally have in your phone or your laptop or your basic computer. Uh, but if you can, please do so. And in fact, I learn a lot from watching Stupid O'Clock on the weekends when uh, you and everybody start going through your equipment. So, yeah, yeah. this is you. You heard the story of this thing, haven't you? I think I have, but maybe the audience would like to hear it if they haven't already. Well, I get home yesterday and there's a box sitting on the front porch. Inside the box is this little note. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Carl Witzman. Yes. So, he yes, is. Carl, that, that that was what my comment today was. I, heard this. I don't care what people say. Carl Witzman is an awesome dude. He really is. And I'm sure Carl doesn't care what most people say either. But um, but no, Carl, has been, actually, when I was using OBS, I've got to give Carl some props. He uh, was very instrumental in getting my show as far as it went when, when I did use OBS and every step of the way, he's been a great, great uh, resource for me as well. Uh, he also has a secret humor page folks that if you uh, contact Carl or Donna Carlene or myself, uh, you can get in and uh, Carl has many fun broadcasts that he doesn't put on the air. Yes. Um, they are hilarious. Joe shows up to them frequently as do I, and uh, gets a little raucous sometimes, uh, but it's a, a lot of fun. But the thing is, you've got to have a good sense of humor, and you must be impervious to offense. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're easily triggered, this is not your safe space. Uh, yeah. so. Carl does definitely, and we got some more comments that snuck in on us. Okay, uh, it's I read the private chat. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Carl, uh, you are the bomb. I agree. I agree. He is. And, and, and now get the next one if you could, please, Joe. Carl has his response. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we will agree to disagree. Yeah. All right. But yeah. And who is this Carl you speak of? You have a nice twin. <laughs> That sounds like a married couple, if I ever heard one. Oh, I got one like uh, Carly at home. I'm, I'm telling you, yeah, this, this, uh, my cookie that we have mentioned earlier mm. is the same one when I wrote uh, my one book, Volcana. She read the manuscript and she said, "Is chapter thirty nine supposed to make sense?" And I'm like, "Um, yeah, I thought it did." <laughs> so, yeah. So she obviously doesn't give a crap about my feelings, but anyway. <laughs> All right, there's about two minutes left to roll in your 55 minutes of your hour. My fame, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, I want to thank you. So this is a time where you need to jump in and plug your stuff. Well, You've been I plugging everything else? Let's, let's <laughs> plug yourself. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm really bad at when I get started here, because I love talking about Stupid O'Clock and everybody else and Carl and all my other, my Nevermoreans, as we call him. But, um, okay, I will do that. And I thank you very much for the platform um, and the time here. You guys have been great, and uh, this has been a winner already. Anyway, I'm Brian K. Morris of Rising Tide Publications, risingtide.pub, where you can sign up for my free monthly newsletter. Or if you have Facebook Messenger, send me your uh, uh, your email address, and I will get uh, you on the list. The next issue goes out this coming Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. We put it out every uh, first of the month. And that's what we do. We also have a variety of books, uh, horror, humor. Uh, this one, Santa Stein, you'll all love it. This is the right season for it. Or can, uh, historical fantasy, contemporary fantasy, we do it all. Also, we have three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, never mind the furthermore. Now, we have StreamYard. Um, if I were in charge of my StreamYard, we wouldn't be holding up a paper sign here. Mm -hmm. But anyway, never mind the furthermore, where you are the guest, you are the star. We talk about what you want to talk about. And Clever Title Pending on Tuesday nights uh, at 8 p.m., where we talk about creativity and the business behind it by interviewing very a whole bunch of really cool creative people. And tonight, um, 
Uh, I hate to take people away from uh, Holocon, but if uh, you want to set up another screen and watch me at uh, 8 p.m. tonight, we're going to be interviewing Master Ron Fitzgerald, Chicago-based gothic illusionist, actor, and soon to be a star of his own comic book. It's going to be a lot of fun, plus we have a guest appearance by somebody who was a guest before, and we need to get Joe on my show uh, as soon as we get an opening. So that's, that's it. And Joe, thank you again for having me. This has been an absolute blast, and good luck with the, the next next 47 hours it's going to be great i'm going to be uh, tuning in when i can uh, i appreciate it ron thank you. thank you uh uh i guess we're going to plug some of our we we got a few sponsors who have bought some ads so guess what we're gonna run a few ads real quick till we uh get our next guest in here so Thank you, Brian. Uh, also, our virtual vendors hall is open at Halocon, Uh There's vendors and all that. And there's also uh, the Halocon merch store is linked there. We've got T-shirts, coffee mugs, a great face mask of our banner back here uh, and all that. So everybody you know, watch our vendors. And Brian, thank you, sir. Uh, you know, normally we say bye afterwards, but I'm not signing off. So I guess you're just going to hit, have to hit leave studio and leave us alone. Oh, well, I will. And uh, in closing, like I said in the video, stay smart, stay safe, wash your hands, and never apologize for being awesome. Joe and everybody here, thank you very much. Thank you for your great questions. Thank you for the support team. And we'll be seeing you later. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night.